ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನತ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಅಪಾರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ ಸುಖವಾರಿರಾಶೆ ಯೋರ್ಮಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಭುವನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಹಾಹಿ ತಂ ರಮಣ ಗಭೀರ ಚಿಂತಾಹೀನ ಹೃದಿ ಚಿಂತ ಉಪದೇಶ ಸಾರ ಸಾರ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಉಪದೇಶ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ given by none less than lord shiva to a bunch of very eminent vedic scholars whose only problem was that they thought the life of endless dynamic shastra oriented action was everything there was they did not know that karma however glorious it may be is not the ultimate in spirituality karma paves the way for jnana the liberating wisdom karma gives to us number of rewards benefits gains in this empirical world in this temporal world a million things that you and i need can be got by karma by acting towards those needs but this ultimate purushartha of human life called mukti or moksha or liberation for good is not possible through karma adi shankara in his commentary on katopanishad says aparam chet praptavyam param chet gnatavyam a pithy statement by the great bhashyakara says in life there are million million things which are in in terms of category upper lower <coughs> food and cloth and shelter and name and fame and long life and good health and influence in the society and winning friends and so on and so forth all of them however great they may appear are upper mukti alone is para and the statement of bhashyakara adi shankara says aparam chet if it is one of these million things that you are seeking at this moment praptavyam it is something that has to be got and to get something which you don't have karma is the way is our additional comment param chet you want liberation you want to realize your own true nature which is ever free as per the siddhanta that is not through karma nor through upasana which is more mind oriented karma is more body oriented but both of them are characterized by doing paranchet if it is the supreme goal of liberation it's not praptavyam it's not about acquiring it's about knowing you must know that you are already free or in today's psychology popular psychology two words have become very popular in the context of relaxing or rejuvenation in the context of renewal of the soul in the context of 
getting peace in relationships two words that are current in popular psychology are let go let go please see is not about acquiring let go is in terms of letting go of false notions attachments you are looking at somebody as though he belongs to you he is my person he must do as i say and so on let go with due respect to yourself and to others nobody belongs to anybody nor do we belong to anybody in that sense everyone has to have their own space so param chet if you want liberation it's not by grabbing one more thing buying one more thing going one more place but it is to let go of a hang up that you may have in your mind in the light of it shiva in that story epic story that the poet muruganar was composing at a certain juncture lord shiva comes along and instructs those vedic scholars who otherwise were eminent he instructs them that karma is not the highest you are all doing vedika karma hats off to you but please know what is beyond and that is jnana and the last verse we saw last night in the second class of this five class series shri ramana maharshi gave a summary shloka that was throwing light on nine verses that were already completed and had a bearing on another 20 verses which are now coming up and to say in two sentences that 10th verse said karma bhakti raja yoga and various forms of jnana yoga are all meant ultimately to eliminate the false sense of our being a separate self and to help our mind anchor itself in heart the heart with their upper case h is the pure self there is in you me her him everybody even in an ant and in the chaturmukha brahma there is in all of us there, there is this infinite pure self everyone is the pure self really that is the upanishadic uh, secret our mind today is anchored in the separate self paul brunton was a british writer scholar after coming to india visiting many saints and spending some precious time with maharshi ramana figured out that these indians have a very interesting philosophy they talk about the ego then they talk about something which is their true nature and he had one difficulty he saw that indians even when they translate this matter to english <coughs> were using the word self for both the limited self and the unlimited self he had a little jitter about it he felt that self with a lower case s representing the ego i am man i am woman i am old i am young i am successful here but a failure there all this put together is the lower self then the indians talk about the pure self and when they write they use capital s he felt no so he went back to uk and he wrote a very famous book where he called the unlimited infinite true nature of every one of us not self with an upper case s but he coined a new word over self therefore his book was the wisdom of the over self that means the pure self which is over which is above the limited i 
So the tenth shloka said, using the word heart, mind descending and anchoring itself in the over self, in the heart, is the final goal, the destination common to all the paths. Karma and Bhakti, which got over with nine verses, Yoga and Jnana, which are coming in the next ten verses. Hrithstale Manaswastata is Nishchitam, decisively, the goal of Kriya, Bhakti, Yoga and Bodha. These are Karma, Bhakti, Raja Yoga and Jnana Yoga. Now in the next six verses, Sri Maharshi hits a sixer in the language of cricket. He hits a sixer on Raja Yoga or Patanjali's Ashtanga Yoga. Let's read the verses 11 and 12. Vayurodhana liyate manaha Vayurodhana liyate manaha Jalapakshiva Rodha Sadhanam Jalapakshiva Rodha Sadhanam Vayu Rodhana Liyate Manaha Vayu Rodhana Liyate Manaha Jalapakshiva Rodha Sadhanam Jalapakshiva Rodha Sadhanam Chittavayava Chitkriya Yuta Chittavayava Chitkriya Yuta Shakha Yordvai Shakti Moolaka Shakha Yordvai Shakti Moolaka Chittavayavah Chitkriya Yuta Chittavayavah Chitkriya Yuta Shakha Yordvai Shakti Moolaka Shakha Yordvai Shakti Moolaka being concise and being precise are two marks of Sri Ramana Maharshi's communication. He never goes into much elaboration. He leaves it to the Shastris and Pandits and Academicians. He would tell the professors, you elaborate on this. He just gives the essentials. Secondly, when he gives the essentials, he takes care not to leave them ambiguous. He is precise. Sometimes you may be concise and you may lack precision. Some other time you are precise but you are going to extra length. Maharshi's language in all his works in all his dialogues, talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi, uh, is marked by being precise, being concise. In the eleventh verse he says, if you restrain your breathe, breathing, why you here is not your hurricanes and tornadoes and tempests and storms, it's not the outer air, it is the air that is in the form of our own breathing. Vayu Rodhana. If we restrain our breathing, Rodhana is Nirodhana, Samrodhana. He says, Manaha Liyate. Our mind <coughs> subsides. The mind doesn't go away. By the way, the word mind here in line with certain other scriptures of ancient past, refers to the separate self, the ego. Because the crux of the problem in human life is the ego. If we are poor, that is not so much of a problem. But if our self-esteem falls because of the less money we have, that is a big problem. If my health is not so good, it's not so much of a problem, though it is some discomfort for sure. 
but along with the discomfort that my poor health is causing to me if i nurture or if i nurse a psychological wound that all my classmates are fit and fine only i am unwell my right side neighbor is so fit and fine he goes jogging every day my left side neighbor is so good she goes swimming every day i cannot move out of my room comparison and all kinds of labels that we put upon ourselves even a swami ji like this guy who is speaking here suppose falls for the trap of comparison another 